morning the day before we get Freya so this time tomorrow we'll be going to get our little pup and I was just thinking that it's our last day is just two people in our little family and it's like a really big decision to get a dog and it's one I've been thinking about for so long but then now that it's finally here like I'm nervous like I'm so excited but I'm also like this is a really big responsibility and I feel like Lou and I are responsible people but I I don't know, it's like everything is about to change. Having a dog here, you know, we've been able to just do whatever we want, go wherever we want, change our minds all the time. <laughs> and now we have this like other little creature that's gonna be part of our decision-making process. And I think it's gonna be so special and add such a beautiful layer to our life. And we're so excited to have a little animal companion and to train her and to make her feel happy and like part of the family but it's also like nerve wracking. Like I hope we do a good job. Oh, also today is our final day of preparation. So we're gonna do a little bit more planning on our daily routine with her, make a few note cards so that we can have easy access to the training things that we want. Lee's gonna build a ramp because I guess with German Shepherd puppies, their hips, like you really gotta be careful with them so that they stay healthy their whole life. So she can't go up and down stairs till she's like three months old and so we're gonna lose gonna build a little ramp on our stairs so that she can just walk up easy peasy and yeah the crate is made the lights are put out so that we can walk easily at night to take her out to the bathroom and is there anything else we need to do lou I think that's kind of I think it. that's kind of it. Like we're ready. We got the water bowl, the food bowl, we got the dog food. We've got training treats. We've got a leash. We've got a collar. We got some chew toys. We've got, yeah, I think that's all you really need. We've got a lot of love to give this little pup, but we're going to take it very easy. We're going to be very calm and let her get used to us. <sighs> 24 hours left without a puppy. <laughs> So I got a bunch of these solar lights to put all around this area back here because this is where we want to do the puppy potty training and it's usually dark early in the morning and it gets dark pretty early at night too so it's nice to like have a way to see things and I think they'll just go like all around this little area. It's very exciting getting everything puppy proofed. <laughs> lights are in action. Pretty cool. This will be the spot right here. Beautiful moon tonight.
the dog is arriving in about an hour, but we're early, headed over there now, and it just feels so crazy that we're gonna get to meet our little puppy. We've gotten a few pictures, she is adorable, but I feel like it's gonna be even better in real life. This is my first puppy ever, and something that I truly have been waiting for my entire life, so 30 years in the making, and it just feels so unreal. Like, even packing a little bag with all her supplies, like her water bowl and her leash, and all these things, it just feels insane because I was like the kid who would sit in the library and read every single dog book and prepping for this it was like taking me back to like my eight-year-old self like wishing I had a dog so bad and now like it's actually happening and so just feels crazy but in the best way so hopefully she loves us and she hasn't had too long of a journey and yeah we'll keep you posted it's really exciting Lou's driving I'm preparing mentally for the best moment of my whole life and we should be meeting her very, very soon. <laughs> oh, man. Lou, it's about to happen. It's crazy, right? I'm so excited. This has truly been a moment I've been waiting for my entire life. You can ask my parents. I was like the kid who literally took every single book about dogs out of the library, read them all. You had like snakes, what did you have? Oh yeah, so we were obsessed <laughs> with dogs, me personally obsessed with dogs. My mom also obsessed with dogs, but both my parents worked too much so that we couldn't get a dog. So then they would, you know, feel bad and be like, wow, these kids really need a pet. So <laughs> I was obsessed with all animals. We would have snakes, turtles, um, hermit have? crabs, all different kinds of fish. We had birds for a little bit. We had a rabbit for a hot second. My mom got one when my dad was on a business trip. That didn't go over so well. So then we had to give that back. But yeah, it was like, it was just impossible. My parents do have a dog now. They're very, very happy with it. My older brother, his wife, they have two dogs. So it is our turn. <laughs> Your brother has a dog. Like, I've, all my friends have dogs. We had dogs growing up. Yeah, you lucked out. You got to grow up <laughs> as, with dogs in your family. But now it is my turn. It's our turn. Yeah. But like you've had a dog and it just feels like so exciting. And I've been reliving my childhood reading books constantly. I think I've read like six like training books. You've read a couple of them twice like, now. Yeah, I've read a couple twice. Just really trying to understand how we can be the best dog parent and like support her growth and like have her grow into this like awesome, socialized, well-behaved, well-trained, well-trained, beautiful creature that she that wants will to be. You. Yeah, she's gonna be the cutest thing ever. And I don't know. It just feels like so full circle with everything with Alfie. This is a, a That's dog. That's a whole different story. Yeah. So the story of our new puppy really begins with the story of Alfie. Back in 2018, Dana and I were living in southern Spain, working on our van build while renting a small cottage in the mountains. And living on the property was an eccentric British woman who had a young cat, two donkeys, and a large German shepherd. Come on, Alfie. Where's your stick? Over the months, our bond with Alfie grew, and eventually we'd find him at our front door each morning, waiting to come join us on the van build. He always wanted to be close by, watching us build out the van, stirring up trouble with the donkeys, and lounging about in the dirt. In the evenings, I'd edit the weekly video, and Dana often went up alone into the mountains to walk with Alfie. The mountain path was pretty remote, but occasionally she'd meet strangers up there. And those encounters are when I started to realize the incredible potential of a large German Shepherd for personal protection. When the van build was done and our rental contract expired, we were reluctantly given the option to buy Alfie and take him with us. And if I could go back in time to that old fork in the road, I'd go back right now. I'd rebuild the van interior to accommodate a dog. I'd travel to less hot climates, move slower, stay in the van longer, maybe never end up on a boat at all, and thereby avoid what happened in Croatia in 2019. Yeah, I 
was just sitting right here. So I had left Dana alone at a nice campsite in Croatia for a week while I went to the Alps to go off-roading with my cousin Tim. And one day, Dana decided to walk down a trail leading to a secluded beach. And as she was sitting there drawing flowers in her sketchbook, a Croatian man cornered her on the stairs, exposed himself from less than a foot away, and demanded sex. She froze in panic, and yet, somehow, the situation didn't escalate further into physical violence. He left, and the next day, she got out of Croatia and met me in Switzerland. Like, it makes me so angry that, like, something that was, like, a really special moment, and, like, I'd been alone for a while in the van, and I was feeling really, like, good and really empowered, and I'd found, like, such a beautiful spot. And, I don't know, to have that, like, stolen because somebody, like, wants to do that to somebody else, it just, like, makes me so upset. I think to just minimize it as, like, oh, like, I was flashed or something like that is, like, how sometimes in my head I was, like, don't make it such a big deal, but it was kind of a big deal and it was really scary and I feel like, yeah, it stole a little bit of like, or a lot of the joy of like my independence and feeling like I was capable of doing stuff on my own. And so yeah, I just have to figure out like how to get that back. And I think it's just gonna be a slow process and until then I'm really happy you're here. Dana is the bravest person I know and it didn't take her long to regain her confidence. But for me, it was a slower road. And I know in my heart that with a dog like Alfie by her side, that event would have never taken place. And so that's how we ended up with Freya. Inside. Everybody's in. the best dog in the world. Okay. Here she is. Good girl. Good girl. Come here. Good girl. There's more. Come on. Good girl. Come on. Yes. Yeah, you're doing it. Yeah, you're so brave. You're brave. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Come on. There's more. Yeah. There you go. Good job, little Freya. Good job. All the way up the stairs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good girl, you did it. Hi, puppy.
So we just got Freya back to the house and she is the cutest little thing. She's already so brave. She like didn't complain at all during the car ride and is just kind of exploring her new yard. And it's just so much fun having a puppy. It like brings me back to when I was a little kid and we had dogs. Real. I can't believe this is real. <laughs> She's like cuter and more special than I even could have imagined. A little creature. Yeah, she's gorgeous. I think she needs to calm down. Mm -hmm. So. Good girl. So we bought this little pup from a local woman on the Big Island, who has been breeding working line German Shepherds for decades. These are the dogs you typically see at the airport, sniffing bags, and sometimes in the army as well. They have enhanced drives, bond intensely to their handlers, and are exceptionally intelligent and clear-headed. They can make great family dogs, but the last thing I would want this video to do is inspire someone to go out and buy a working line German Shepherd without doing adequate research. These dogs require massive amounts of energy into training them properly, hours of exercise a day, and if they aren't properly taken care of, they have the capacity to make your life miserable at best and dangerous at worst. Once Freya is trained and we have the space to add additional dogs to our pack, Dana's dream is to rescue a few older dogs from a kill shelter. Growing up, my family rescued a few dogs, and I can tell you from personal experience that the love you get from a rescue dog is a different kind of love altogether. An older, fully house-trained dog from the pound can be a much easier, less expensive option, which is why we will be going down that route for at least our next two or three dogs, because this little girl is a handful. I think humane dog ownership is about asking yourself what it is you want from a dog and what you are prepared to give in return. Rescuing dogs from the shelter is one part of the solution, but so is making sure they don't end up there to begin with. So if you want a chill dog to watch Netflix with on the couch and don't feel like training much, don't get one of these. I wanted a dog that Dana could take on her own in remote areas and feel safe with, whose appearance alone would be intimidating to strangers and whose loyalty to Dana would be unbreakable. I wanted a dog who could learn quickly, exercise for hours on end, and potentially even do search and rescue work in the future. And I'm hoping little Freya can accomplish all that. So Freya just had her first nap. She was in the crate for an hour, but the woman we bought her from on the Big Island, she's actually already got her trained up to four hours per day in the crate, and she woke up very refreshed. <laughs> she's got a lot of energy now. So it should be a really fun afternoon. We're just gonna try and keep things super calm, not like wind her up at all, and not have any accidents out here on the porch. <laughs> so much fun, Dana. It's literally crazy. Right. We're using the porch as like her playpen area because it's just way easier. It's already set up and then we didn't have to buy a playpen. Yeah. And I think it's like really good for her because she gets to be outside, hear all the different noises. Yeah, and she's like so well acclimated, I feel like, to noise already. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> she hasn't found her voice yet. <laughs> <That's so laughs> we'll see what happens once she starts barking. No.
<laughs> She's already doing so much better on the leaf. Mm -hmm. One way to avoid an accident, never go inside. <laughs> <laughs> and then we waited. It's been about an hour, right? Oh, don't sit in the water. Yeah, I feel like that's like not totally house training. If you like never go back inside. I think it is. It is? Yeah, that's the trick. The second we go inside, she's gonna poop on the floor. A hundred percent. We gotta wait it out. Now we've committed. <laughs> Sunk cost. Sunk cost. Oh, puppy. Freya, go potty. Go potty. So two hours took her to poop. Oh my <laughs> god. But we did it. And we have had multiple peas. And now I'm a person with a dog who talks about poop and pee all the time. Which is just hilarious because I always was like, ew, gross. I can't believe people just talk about that all the time. But then when you're like in charge of it, you're like, Hey, 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 the girl needs to poop. <laughs> Let's take this off. Yeah, uh, enough leash time enough for you. Enough leash time for you. There you go, you're free. <laughs> you have the first good day. Yeah, I'm so proud of us. She's doing great. And yeah, I feel like the more days that we can actually create a routine for her, the better. Today was obviously super chaotic, but no, uh, she's already calm again. She's such a good dog. Like I just can envision like our whole life together and like going on hikes together and taking her swimming and just chilling, honestly, just sitting and reading. She's got a great temperament. She's she very is. brave. She's and, like, like brave and curious, but friendly and like really, really affectionate. Like she's a super cuddly little dog. And I feel like I should still be on watch because yeah. you never know. <laughs> I was just thinking that. You never know. Thank you.